Does Starfinder have dragons in it? You bet your sweet scaly cheeks it does. There are many classifications of dragons spread out through Alien Archives 1, 2, and 3. And while we do have a bunch of high level information around the dragons, there isn't a ton that I could find on pinpoint specifics around the dragon, so freeform this around your table as you will. Dragons in Starfinder are exactly like you would expect them to be. They are ingenious. They are extremely powerful. And they are, of course, very intelligent. There are four broad categories of dragons within Starfinder. Most of them will be evil, but there is some good ones in there. The two most common types of dragons that you'll run into are the chromatic and the metallic dragons. Chromatic dragons are usually evil, and the metallic dragons, they are usually good, or at least trying to better society as a whole. Some dragons even develop the ability to take on a humanoid shape or some form of bipedal, so that they integrate better into the average person's society. This is good because as dragons age, they get bigger. There are a couple of dragons that will augment themselves or go through genetic modification so that they can stay small. They don't lose their power, maybe a little bit of physical strength, but they do this so that they can fit into starships better. Now I am specifically referring to the traditional style of dragon. I'm not talking about the dragonkin. I'm not talking about the Rephorians. You can go watch my video on Triaxis if you want to learn about them. Triaxis is home to many of the dragonborn. I mean, dragonkin and the Rephorians. But you can also find the more traditional style of dragons there as well. And what's interesting is some of these older elder dragons, they are actually CEOs of major corporations. Chromatic dragons, while they can be evil, they are also self-serving, so they are trying to amass their own fortunes, they are trying to accomplish their own goals. If it increases their personal wealth or power, then you can probably get the buy-in of a chromatic dragon. The black dragon is fairly common among them. These ones are a little bit more on the aggressive side. These ones are typically quite callous. They use fear and intimidation to achieve their goals. They are typically found in wet swamplands or anywhere where you're going to find a bog. You could potentially run into a black dragon if it's decided to make this area its home. They can also move through quicksand as well. So while there's less of a chance, if you are in a desert area, you could potentially stumble across a black dragon and its lair. Blue dragons are planners. They are schemers. They are obsessive over their plans and their designs, and there's usually plans within plans within those plans. This is how much they enjoy plans. Blue dragons can also mimic any voice or sound that it has heard before. Of all the chromatic dragons, the green ones are probably the most reasonable. That doesn't mean they're loyal. If there's a profit to be made by turning tail or stabbing someone in the back, they absolutely will do that. There is a particularly well-known green dragon on Castravel. He is currently protected by an army of lawyers, and that is because this dragon controls an ancient elven portal forest. It used to belong to the elves, they used to control it. However, sometime during the gap, the dragon took control, was given control. Nobody really knows exactly what has happened. The elves of Castravel, they tried to take this area back by force, and this dragon, uh, it didn't like that. They also tried to use the legal system within the Pact Worlds to get their area back. However, this is where that army of lawyers comes in, and they fiercely protect this green dragon and his rights. Red dragons are hotheads. Don't disrespect one because they won't stand for your bullshit. Adventurers who have encountered a red dragon have been known to continue living with the proper amount of groveling. And they love to live near or in volcanoes or fire planets, anywhere where it's warm. In contrast, white dragons, they like to live in the cold. And that's why you will find a disproportionate number of them on Triaxis as Triaxis is currently in its winter season, and that season lasts about a hundred or so years. They are also naturally adept at moving within the ice and the snow, 
and just like the environment of winter that they like to live in, they are largely perceived as cold and emotionless. However, that's not exactly true. Now the metallic dragons, they tend to use their abilities, their size, their vast array of wealth to protect things that are important to them, as well as improve their general surroundings. If you run into a metallic dragon out in the wilderness somewhere, it's less likely that you're going to get eaten or squished to death. Just make sure you're respectful, and that goes to whatever dragon you meet. Brass dragons are gossips. They love the juiciest little details. They typically will live near society or civilization. Doesn't matter if it's human or not because they enjoy the interaction. They're not much for fighting, even though they absolutely can hold their own in one. It instead releases a cloud of gas that puts people to sleep. Bronze dragons appreciate natural beauty. They can often be found near lakes, oceans, the sea, and they have commonly been known to aid travelers who have good intentions or noble intent. For these dragons, if you piss them off, their breath weapon just makes you want to turn around and avoid contact with the dragon, so there's no real need for large confrontation. Copper dragons are jerks. They enjoy playing tricks, doing pranks on both their friends and their enemies. They can be found near mountainous areas, rocky crags, anything that's got kind of a stone or a cave that they can go into. They have a real penchant for being able to climb stone. What makes them a little more dangerous than usual is their breath weapon can slow you down. Not only could you be trying to move through some difficult terrain, but suddenly you're breathing in a gas that makes you move a little bit slower. In a place that's already moving slow, they will have a huge tactical advantage on you, plus being able to, you know, fly. And then there's the gold dragons. These ones are known specifically for being extremely wise, very noble dragons. Many who discover the whereabouts of a gold dragon will try to seek it out. They will try to gain its wisdom, get some insight into their life. People do this as well as other dragons. If a gold dragon wants to disappear, it's very easy for it to do as it can change its shape and they can do this at will. Silver dragons, they hold themselves to a personal code of courage and honor. It's very unlikely that you would ever get stabbed in the back from a deal that you've made with a silver dragon. It can be a little bit difficult to track one down though because they have special abilities that allow them to just stand on a cloud. Now there's some dangerous dragons that you can encounter in space. These would be known as the void dragons. They are exceptionally rare even more so than the metallic and the chromatic dragons. They are born in space and they live in space. They can also travel on their own through space. A void dragon or two has been known to land on a planet and start interacting with its inhabitants. They have also been known to land on barren moons, barren rocks, for whatever their own purpose or their own whims. No one really knows for sure. Some believe that the void dragons are just a coalescence of magical energies birthed from the void. While they do carry a similar look to the other chromatic dragons that most might be a little bit more familiar with, they are definitely more spiky. Their colors can change with them as they move. If you encounter one of these in space, definitely be on your guard and prepared to run unless you're very, very well equipped. A type of void dragon are the lunar dragons. They tend to visit societies that haven't achieved space flight, help their scientists give it, and then move on to the next society. The only reason that we know this, the only reason that it is known that they do this, the only reason they know that this happens is because these societies that suddenly have achieved space flight meet all the other civilizations within the galaxy and their history or their stories have similarities to others from before them. Solar dragons have a very high opinion of themselves. They like to stay near stars, and they believe themselves to be the original sources of light and life within the universe. As there are time mages, there are also time dragons. 
and they tend to want to keep time moving the way it was intended. So if you are messing with time, it is very possible that you could run into or encounter a time dragon. For these dragons, time is different. They can age, they do get old, but they don't ever die from old age. Void dragons are horrific. They are ancient, they are old, they live in the void, the area beyond the galaxy where you have the eldritch beings. Not to mention these eldritch beings have also affected the mental state of these void dragons being that they have been in the same area for so long. Void dragons do nothing but feed, consume, and destroy. If a void dragon kills you with its bite, you are reduced to dust. Vortex dragons are messengers for extremely powerful galactic entities. If you see a void dragon show up and it has a message, you better listen because something more powerful is behind that void dragon. When it comes to traveling through space, nothing rivals that of a vortex dragon. And the vortex dragons are commonly neutral as well. They have no particularly strong feelings one way or the other as long as their message gets delivered. Star Metal Dragons, they are also rare, but they are actively hunted because they are made out of precious metals, rare materials that can be used for construction, weapons, buildings, and enhancements for armaments. No one knows where they came from, and the topic of their origins is highly debated among scholars throughout the universe. Abyssium dragons tend to look more blue and green. That's because their body is made of a radioactive substance called abyssium, which glows a blue-greenish color. Abyssium is a power source. It is used to power starships. It is used in high-capacity batteries. So if your ship runs out of fuel, this resource is valuable, if a little dangerous if you can get past the radioactive glow. Adamantine dragons are very loyal. They form tight-knit communities, and typically they do this with starship pilots. Pure adamantine is a very, very rare metal to find, but when it is harvested and used in weapons, it is particularly good at making sure that things that resist taking damage take it. Another dangerous type of dragon that you can run into is the Horacalcum dragon. This particular metal warps time and space around it. Horacalcum is used in stasis chambers to reverse the aging process. And witch warpers, they like to study this metal because it alters space-time at a quantum level. Noquil dragons are very rarely seen. If you do see one, it's probably because you're an evil spellcaster and it's coming to kill you. The Noquil dragons seek out battle with evil mages, and they're particularly good at this because their entire body is made of Noquil, which is resistant to basically all forms of magic. And Noquil as a metal can be worked just as easily as steel or aluminum into armor, weapons, starship hulls. It is very strong and surprisingly lightweight. Sycotite dragons are a little unstable. They're almost bipolar in a way. As a metal, in its base form, Sycotite is very, very cold. You can't make armor out of it because of how cold it is in its natural state. However, if you expose it to heat, then it becomes too hot to wear because the metal then absorbs the heat and becomes a furnace. Granted, it takes a lot of energy to get the metal to switch from a hot or cold state. It can be done. It has to be really hot. It has to be really cold. And you have to keep that temperature on it for about 24 hours. Weapons made out of the Sycotite metal, they can do substantial damage to those on the receiving end, but those who wield them can also have damage done to them. There are so many dragons when it comes to Starfinder, and I feel like they are very underused in the system. If you like this video about the types of dragons, then you should enjoy the one on your screen now about the playable types of dragons. Thank you to all of my patrons and the support that you give me and the channel. Tell me in the comments what your favorite dragon is. My name's Nathaniel. Thanks for stopping by, everyone.